Hi everyone, my name is Arissa and thanks for joining us for our chemistry video on 16.2 which is going to be the second higher level subtopic of rates of reactions for IV chemistry. So this topic primarily concerns Arrhenius's equation. So this over here is Arrhenius's equation. It's found in your data booklet in section one. So that's the screenshot I've taken um, over there. And the main gist of the equation is it shows us how k, which is little k over here, your rate constant, is related to t. So it shows us the relationship between k and t. t is temperature, by the way. So let's go through what each of those letters in this equation stand for. So I've already told you that k is the rate constant. Now, earlier in 16.1, we sort of met K for the first time. So remember, K is a constant for a particular reaction as a particular temperature. The only thing that can affect the value of K is temperature. And in fact, changes in temperature affect K in an exponential manner. So it's worth bearing that in mind. They're exponentially linked together. Next up, we've got A. So A is Arrhenius's constant, also known as sometimes um, the frequency factor. Arrhenius's constant tells us the proportion of molecules that react with sufficient energy and in the right collision geometry to react. So the proportion of molecules that react with sufficient energy in the right orientation to react. And if you remember, sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy barrier and the right collision geometry are both factors from uh, collision theory, which we saw in 6.1. So Arrhenius's constant sort of tells us about the proportion of molecules that uh, meet the requirements of collision theory. EA is activation energy, so the minimum energy required to start a reaction, and the unit for that is going to be kilojoules per mole. T is going to be temperature in Kelvin, so remember if you get Celsius, you can convert that to Kelvin by adding 273. And last but not least, R is your gas constant. So also available in your data booklet from section two. So it's going to be 8.31. So this is Arrhenius's constant. In your data booklet, however, you also get a different version of Arrhenius's equation. So this version over here, this is the modified uh, version of the equation that we can get by taking the natural log on either side. But don't worry, it's kind of given to you in the data bucket already. And um, the reason why the modified version is very useful is because if we have a look over here, it kind of looks very similar to y equals mx plus c. And y equals mx plus c is the equation for a straight line. Oops, let me just write that down. So let's draw some parallels between them then. So if you were to try and graph out this modified Arrhenius's equation according to the rules of y equals mx plus c, on your y-axis you would have ln k, so the natural log of your rate constant. If we have a look at this, val um, this value over here, so this is going to be your mx. So m is going to be the gradient, and that's going to be negative ea over r. So negative e over r. What this tells us is that you're looking at a negative curve. So the curve is going to slope downwards in that manner. The other thing is that this also tells us is that the larger the ea, the steeper the gradient. So when you have an equation, uh, sorry, when you have a reaction with a large activation energy, that's going to have a steep, uh, uh, that's going to have a steep line when graphed out according to Arrhenius's equation. Your x-axis is going to be 1 over t, so t is temperature. And last but not least, your y-intercept is going to be the natural log of your Arrhenius's constant. So let's have a look at what this curve actually looks at then. So over here on your right, you've got your regular y equals mx plus c. And then over here on the left, this is kind of the outline of what it looks like when we've um, graphed out the modified Arrhenius's equation. So you can see the gradient is negative negative e over r, our axes are 1 over t against ln k, and our y-intercept is going to be ln a. So let's look at the kinds of questions that you can get asked about 16.2. 
So this question over here from the 2018 paper asks us about the effects of increasing temperature on the rate constant K. So remember I told you earlier that K changes with temperature exponentially. It increases exponentially with temperature. So 21 is going to be C. Another question from 16.2 as well um, is this one over here. So I've taken this one from uh, the 2018 paper. And this question is a little bit unorthodox in terms of its um, wording. But it says, describe how the activation energy of this reaction could be determined. So in the entirety of the chemistry syllabus, we really talk about activation energy mostly in topic six. So 16.2 is the only kind of subtopic that gives you an idea of how we could determine this. So the way that we can determine this is by finding the gradient on the graph that we showed that I showed you earlier, the one from the modified Aurelius' equation. So remember that was a graph of one over t against ln k. And then we would want to plot points along this graph. But where would those points come from? Well, those points would come from conducting at a reaction at different temperatures, right? Because then we would have different values to input along our x-axis. So you'd want to conduct an experiment at different temperatures, and then, based on the values that you obtain, plot those values, and that's going to allow us to work out Ea. So remember earlier, the gradient was minus Ea over R. So if you wanted to find Ea, that would simply mean rearranging the equation to be M times R, so with the gradient times R. So let's have a look at what the mark scheme said. So having a look at both of these alternatives, let's stick to alternative one, because I think it's kind of the most understandable one. So you'd want to carry out the reaction at several temperatures. That's going to give you your data points to kind of like plot. And then your axes would be one over T against ln K. And then Ea would equal to negative gradient times by R. So that was kind of the equation that we solved um, over there as well in the previous slide. So this bit over here. So just always remember that they are kind of like different variations of this question. So here they've asked you how the activation energy could be determined, but they could have also asked you how the Arrhenius's constant could have been determined. And it would have been exactly the same thing in terms of carrying it out at different temperatures and plotting it. But then now you'd be solving for A. And remember, ln A is your C intercept. So you would find the C intercept, uh, sorry, the C intercept, and then take the natural exponent um, of it to sort of find A, right? So just be aware of those variations. All right. So this subtopic is primarily concerned Arrhenius's constant and Arrhenius's equation. So I would say really wrap your head around that. And I hope it's been useful in doing that. So if you'd like more support, do have a look at our other videos. Also check out our website for details on how you can get online private tuition or um, come join us at one of our revision courses. And um, thank you.